Good afternoon, my dear. The topic I want to talk to you about today is very sad. It's sad because when I talk about these things, very often they don't hear me. The problem I want to talk about has enslaved my country, Russia. I come to European countries, and I see the same thing there. But what is very scary is that no one can fully assess this problem. What is it? Today I want to talk to you about the spirit of alcoholism. Right now, before we start talking about the spirit of alcoholism, think about whether you have alcoholism in your lineage. If you're from Russia, or your ancestors are from Russia, maybe you remember an uncle who drinks heavily so he falls into an alcoholic coma. Or maybe you live in a wonderful developed country and it is rather natural having a bottle of wine or beer on your table every day. What is alcoholism? And what is the spirit that gives rise to alcoholism? Let's first look at the image of that spirit. What you see in the picture now is the extreme stage of alcoholism. You see a creepy monster that grabbed a person with its teeth and claws. The man, sure, is holding a bottle in his hand. But note that this monster is coming out of the bottle. It's got a big tail. In fact, what you see in the picture is just one tentacle from the enormous spirit of alcoholism. As a shaman, I often receive people who come to me and say, my loved one, my husband, my child, it's terrible, is enslaved by alcoholism. Save them. What do we do? We hold shamanistic rituals. And we go to the lower world, where all those spirits, monsters that devour people. And I see a huge body in a certain place. It's like some kind of spruce. It's the body of the spirit of alcoholism. And there are a lot of tentacles coming out of it. There's a bothrium at the end of each tentacle. Imagine these tentacles wrapping up the entire planet Earth. They move around, and it's as if they're finding out where the victims, that the spirit of alcoholism will grab. How? Under which parameters? Who is the spirit of alcoholism looking for? Who are these tentacles looking for on Earth? I mean, we are many, and not all of us suffer from alcoholism. Do you know who? The man who's lost his meaning in life. The man who doesn't know why he lives. Why he wakes up in the morning, sees the beautiful sun. Why? What will he do? I mean, this man who hasn't found a place in his lineage. He, maybe, was special, talented since childhood, but that talent turned out to be useless. They told him that painting won't make him any use in life. That he needed a good profession. What use will singing make you? Or any other talent? A man with a talent who wasn't supported. Or it's a man who hasn't even had time to reveal his talent, his gift, what he can do that will make the whole world smile and say, wow, super, you're doing great. A man who wasn't praised as a child, wasn't supported, was abandoned. That is, a man who lived in a dying lineage where indifference reigns. And this man, who has no sense of life, just walks on the surface of our planet Earth. He just lives. He eats. He sleeps. He goes to work to make money. And he needs the money to buy food so he can go to work in the morning. And he needs to go to work to earn a living to have money to buy food. And over and over again. These people can fall prey to some very powerful monsters. Like the spirits of war, hatred, aggression, or drugs. The spirit of alcoholism searches the surface of the earth and captures such lost people. After all, such a person has nothing to lose, he has no sense of life. And the tentacle of the spirit of alcoholism seized the man with a tentacle and just sucked on him. 
What does a man feel? He doesn't know why he woke up. He doesn't know why he lives. Everything's pointless and interesting. He just wants to relax. He is tired of everything. He'll just have some beer. He just wants to visit Oktoberfest. What harm will a glass of wine do? There's nothing wrong with it. In Russia, they speak about a shot glass of vodka. What's the problem? But he drinks this alcohol and he starts feeling free. All the problems have gone away. He finally has a meaning for life. He's finally stress-free. He finally doesn't think he's a worthless creature and nothing works for him. He's free from those thoughts. Naturally, the spirit of alcoholism wants him to keep taking alcohol. The tentacles suck the energy out of the man, and the man wants to drink again. And so, he's already got a habit of drinking a bottle of beer every night. And, it's a slightly different tradition in Russia. These are alcoholic parties, where people get drunk so that they faint. And it goes on and on. And in the end, this tentacle of the spirit of alcoholism grows. And there appears not just a bothrium, but such muzzle that you see on the screen now, with such teeth, eyes, ears and paws. And that monster grows on the fact that a man drinks a bottle of beer every day, drinking with friends every weekend. Such little details help this monster grow to such an extent that it completely captures the person. And the person becomes spineless. He can do nothing without the spirit of alcoholism. He's already totally addicted. And one day he falls into an alcoholic coma. That's the lack of self-control. And when you come to your loved one, you see them flat-eyed. And the man can't cope with his illness and mania. The mania of drinking alcohol over and over again. That's it. This man is no longer in your family tree. Imagine the family tree now. One branch is your brother, or son, or husband. And this branch is wrapped with the tentacles of the spirit of alcohol as if by snake. And this tentacle is embedded in your loved one. How do you feel? Now you feel he is not on your family tree. This branch is missing. That's right, it doesn't belong to your family tree anymore. It belongs to this spirit of alcoholism. What shall we do? Are we going to let our loved one get eaten to the end? Let him lose himself into drinking to the point when his physical body just can't stand it? So that he can just stay abandoned in the street or die? What are we going to do? You know, that's actually a very difficult question to answer. Because in this case, you alone will not be able to help. You just don't have the power. You've already lost him. It will be very difficult to deal with it for a shaman alone, too. People of this lineage, the close people, and shaman have to work together. I'll tell you a story. I have a student. I've known her a long time. She's a terrific woman. She's very creative. She's just super. But she got involved into relationships with a partner who's enslaved to the spirit of alcoholism. And naturally, he would tell her, your creative project doesn't work out well now. Well, people don't understand your desire to sing, so never mind. Let's have a drink. Let's have a break, let's forget about everything. This happened once, two, three times. And we found out that the girl became an alcoholic. It became normal for her to drink a large dose of alcohol every day. Once we had a shamanic seminar. We gathered for a shamanic seminar. And one of the lessons I, as shaman, taught my students was working with the spirit of alcoholism. It just so happens that no one who came to the seminar had any alcoholics in their lineages. This is very rare, but we needed someone to work with and show how to deal with the spirit of alcoholism. And we remembered this beautiful girl. We started calling her. We thought she'd come over, we'd work with her as a group, and everyone would learn. But we found out that she'd been in an alcoholic coma for a few days and she was not really recovering. This was a very good opportunity for us to both help the girl and teach the students. They sent us her picture. 
We printed it and showed it to the students. And here we are all together, our whole group of students, having taken our wonderful shamanic ritual drums, went on a journey to the lower world. To the place of the spirit of alcoholism with thousands, millions of its tentacles. We came to its lair and saw this creepy monster. And it said, you know what? I will give you your girl. I will give you your friend. But you know what? She'll be back to me again in a few days. My tentacles will find her again, and she will drink again. Our group of students, seeing this monster, was very scared. They asked, why? You're willing to give her away. Why will she come back to you again? And the spirit of alcoholism said, it's because no one supports her in her family. And she won't show her creative talents. She won't know what to do again. And she'll start drinking again because of it. And you know what we did? Of course, we released our student from that tentacle. And that's when she came out of the alcoholic coma in the hospital. I think you understand there was more to it. What did we do next? We made an extra shamanistic ritual. We went up to the upper world, the world of the future, and formed a new path for her. Actually, not a new path, but the old path. We opened the way for her talents. We saw her singing, drawing, displaying her creative personality again. We've come back from this journey. We were told that the girl had woken up in the hospital. It was a feeling of victory. It was indeed a great joy. Every soul we pulled out of the clutches of the spirit of alcoholism is a victory. And then we talked to her family. We asked them to support her, to praise her, tell her something good even if she does something badly. We asked them to say, awesome. Great. You're a talented daughter, granddaughter, sister. And we thank her family. They started telling her those words. They did not remind her of the heavy drinking. They said to her, you're doing great. You're doing great. You know, our beautiful student, her name is Eugenia, started to show her artistic abilities again, she felt supported, she started to create more and more. It's been five years since that incident. And not a drop of alcohol. This girl now performs on stage. She has her own creative team. She writes music and poetry. And she pleases the audience of her city with her beautiful voice and beautiful poems and songs at city festivals. Super, isn't it? Yeah, it is. What conclusion shall we draw from it? Come to us, shamans, bring pictures of your loved ones. Sometimes it is possible to bring your loved ones to our shamanic session. Most importantly, the shaman fights the spirit of alcoholism. And further it is very important that you support this man, inspire him to develop his individuality, find the meaning of life with which the soul was born once on earth, so that the soul can follow its path. That's when your loved one will never get in the clutches of the spirit of alcoholism. That's the kind of insidious spirit that exists on earth now. And, unfortunately, a lot of people don't have the meaning of life. Which means they're just victims of the spirit of alcoholism. Unfortunately, we grew up in such a world, where it is not accepted to think about high goals, about the desire to save the whole world, to convey our feelings to everyone. Sometimes it feels like there are only, crazy, shamans left who want to help everyone. But, in fact, it is a property of the soul of every person, to strive, to do something for this world. So let's support the desire of our children, our grandchildren, who make us so happy. Let's say, you can do it. You will cope with it. Go for it. Come on. You can help everyone. You've got the world on a string. Let's help our loved ones find faith in themselves, meaning in life, their predestination. So that our children and grandchildren never have the slightest chance of getting into the clutches of the spirit of alcoholism. I'll say it again. Send me the pictures, bring the pictures. Let's see the talent, ways to help, what to support. And we can unite, save our lineage. Let our family tree blossom grow, and delight many generations of our descendants.
It is in our power to do so.